Now it's time for the recurve women's gold medal match as Russia and Germany take each other on for the European title. These two teams already qualified for the Olympic Games. We suspect these will be the lineups in Tokyo, so this is really about bragging rights. Let's go down for the team introductions. On target number one, representing the Russian Federation, Svetlana Gomboyeva, Yelena Rodikova, Ksenia Perova. On target number two, representing Germany, Michel Kroppen, Charlie Schwarz. Lisa Unruh. The line judge for this match is Java Ford. Well, here we go for the European title Russia versus Germany. Russia lining up with Elena Osipova, Svetlana Gombaeva, and Ksenia Perova. Over the leading light for the Russian team at world number five and on some good form this so far this season. Germany lining up with Charlene Schwartz, Michelle Krutten and Lisa Unruh. Krutten, the world number nine, is the leading athlete for Germany. Russia will get this gold medal match underway as they take on Germany for the European title. Mm, a tricky start there. Parava here going in the middle of the order. Slowly but surely, he's just got better for Russia. So the highest ranked archer for Germany, Michelle Kruppen, is going to open their account. experienced of this team. Looks like she will be the anchor. So a slender one point lead for the Germans, but actually uh, the arrows for them are just a slightly better grouped. So we hand over back to Russia and Elena Ostipova. <laughs> Pretty good group from them, all slightly left, just that they need to make a minor adjustment. Cropping took her time to set up for her first one. She's taking a bit of time on this one as well. Uh, it gets a 10, but perhaps that 
would suggest why she's shooting in first in the order for the German team. Yeah, you normally put your slowest archer first, um, so you know you've got someone who can shoot really quicker if you need to at the end. Charmin Schwartz, just 20 years old, pops it into the seven. So we hand over to the experienced captain of this team. You have to say de facto captain Lisa Unruh, world at number 12. The 10 will give Germany a two point lead, a nine, and we'll be all square. She popped it into the eight, and that means that, uh, believe it or not, Russia lead two set points to nil after the first set. Not perhaps what we expected after those first three arrows from Russia. No, I mean, it was <laughs> either way there, wasn't it? A really tough one to call when um, kind of expected Lisa to get at least that nine to, to tie the points. But, uh, you know, it's the pressure of the, the match again. This is a European title on the line. You know, we can see some nerves, I think, particularly Michelle Kropp and sort of the first arrow. She took a really deep breath to try and settle herself down. And, you know, we haven't seen her really in the finals, I don't think, so far this year. So standing on that stage is a different thing, you know. Yeah, and there is Croppen who just struggling to get a process underway. I think once it gets going, she's actually sort of at the same speed as everyone else, but she has that moment of thinking time just to prepare herself, a deep breath. And it uh, looks like the scores have now been confirmed. And as you can see, it's two set points to nil for the Russians here. And this for the European title. Uh, look, we expect these to be the teams. So a lot of this is about uh, communication with each other and sort of honing that particular skill. Yeah, both both these countries have got the full quota spot for their team. So they're probably trialling out everything they need to before the Olympic Games. Can't see Germany changing the order. Uh, certainly with Michelle Croffen going into the Olympic Games. She is not one to be called upon for a quick shot and she will start things off for Germany in the second set as they trail Russia by two set points. Yeah, another not so good arrow there from Lisa. We normally expect a little bit more from her, the anchor of the team, and just going off to the right again, so some adjustments needed. Yeah, just looking at that, that, that one went off to the right as well, and we just saw the digital windsock. The wind's blowing uh, into their faces, but from right to left, so perhaps they're just overdoing the, the, the aiming. Yeah, they might think they need to do more than they, they need to, really. So, <laughs> so it's really frustrating when you do aim off and the arrow goes exactly where you aimed it. Opportunity here for Russia to put a lot of pressure on. Wave it with a quick release. Oh, well, look at that. Potentially all square, but I think that German arrow may well get marked up to a nine, that second one. Yeah, I was pretty confident that one was in, to be fair. So probably a one-point advantage at this stage. Charlene Schwarz into this German team. First time I've seen her in the team. World number 115. Uh, good little grouping on the left-hand side there. Another nine for them. Uh, pretty buoyant now, actually, the Germans. Lisa Unruh. Had a couple of challenging arrows. An eight and a seven, the last two. 
She's popped to be into the nine as well. So a 27 out of 30 to finish for them. Uh, marked on the scoreboard as a 52, but both Nikki and I think that is a 53. And Russia have the potential to score 55. A little bit of movement, a little bit soft in the shot, went off to the right. Yeah, this one's got away from the Russians, so we will have two set points each. Gombeva, of course, will try and do her best to get this into the 10. And there she's got a great shot into the 10. She's finished uh, with three 10s out of four arrows through the first half of this match. Gone way over the probably the star player for the Russians. But Germany right back in this. Question about the Russian team. Kostinia Pereva is uh, 32 years old and world number five. Why is she shooting in the middle? It's a great question and I, I thought the same actually when I saw it. I think we saw her earlier in the year um, at the Lausanne World Cup two weeks ago in the finals and I remember she had some errors with her release. I think she was struggling a little bit and whether there's just a little bit of doubt in her mind maybe, you know, subjective isn't it? But I just feel that maybe she had a little lack of confidence there and may maybe they put her in the middle for that reason. But there's a whole host of reasons why you choose your lineup as it is. You know, sometimes you put your weakest archer in the middle because you've got the protection of someone out going out first and someone finishing up. Or like I said, it could be on timing. If you've got a slow archer, you put the slow archer first and a, a faster archer towards the end. So, you know, there's a whole host of reasons why you, why you pick your order. And we've seen uh, um, countries change their order as well, haven't we, through the segments? Yeah, uh, uh, there is that, of course, that opportunity for them to change their order at any point. And it could be as simple as uh, not, not just waking up this morning and not feeling 100%. These teams have probably done loads of rotations. You know, we used to do hundreds and hundreds of rot rotations and, and mark the score that you scored of each rotation. So it might be that they've done loads of testing like that, and that's just where they scored the best. So who knows? Yeah, and you've got to say that Gombayev is uh, proving a, an excellent anchor for the Russian team. Uh, even though she is ranked a little bit lower than uh, Perova. Uh, if you look at the Russian lineup, number five in the world, number 19 in the world, number 20. Could probably put them in any order and they'd be a <laughs> challenge. So Elena Osipova will shoot first in the third set. We are all square. Confident start from both Osipova and Perova. Gone by over if she sticks to form. It's going to put a bit of pressure here on Germany in the third set. And just as soon as I say that, look where she throws that arrow. Uh, astonishing, because it, did, it didn't look like there was anything wrong there. It's, it, again, we're talking about wind, aren't we? It could be wind or a tiny error. You know, even a degree difference at this end can cause such a big difference to even miss the target at, at 70 metres. So tiny, tiny little things. Well, it looked like Kroppen knew that one was going to the right. She tried to steer it over to the left. How much does that bokondo, as we call it, you know, the, the steerage, how much does it affect the arrow, or is it just a psychological thing? It's a little bit psychological, I think, because the arrow leaves the bow so quickly, you know, how much influence can you have on it? But it's the psyche almost of being a part of the shot, and, and you know, from that point of view. So, you know, I wouldn't ask archers to try and steer, because I think it's it can be dangerous, really, but just to try and shoot, you know, with that force straight into the target, forward into the ten. It was a great uh, response from Lisa Unruh there, knowing that a 10 was required to draw things level uh, when there was a big opportunity there for uh, Germany after the 7 from Gombayeva. All square halfway through, and now these Russians are honing in on the center of the target. Osipova with a 10. A 
They have found the middle of the target here. Can combo the get over the seven that she shot last. Well, it's a little better. Looks like it may well have clipped the nine. That is a mighty load of pressure, isn't it? Uh, potential for 30 in each half of these uh, three arrows, and they've got 29. Yeah, it's a great score and exactly what they needed to do to put the pressure on. And just like that, it is all over in this set for Germany. They need to go through these final two arrows in preparation for the fourth set where they will have to come back and win it cleanly. Good arrow from Schwartz there, handing over to Lisa Unruh, who popped it into the 10 last time. And she finishes with a 10 again. So Unruh on form, a 52 from them, potentially getting marked up to a 53, but it will matter not because it's four set points to two to Russia. They have won that third set cleanly. So we're having a little bit of to and fro here between Russia and Germany. Uh, not super convincing yet from the Germans. They look solid, but Russia, uh, their trajectory for performance is improving as each set goes on. Yeah, and that last um, half of the end from Russia, they really got pumped up for it, didn't they? Coming off the line with fist pumps, and I think their confidence is running high now, so I think they've got a bit of a momentum here. we we'll take a look back at some of these shots there. Ksenia Perova shooting a 9 and a 10 in that set. Michelle Kroppen, who is the leading archer by ranking in the German team, and well, she's had a bit of a mixed bag, a couple of tens, but then a couple of eights as well. A seven to start off that last set. In contrast, Lisa Unruh has been relatively solid. One off shot so far in the match. But Russia overall improving in performance. They've gone four, two up after three sets. One more set to go. And the Russians, all they have to do is match what the Germans do, and they've taken the European title. They're certainly pumped up and ready to go. And that is probably the most communication and interaction within a team that we've seen so far today. Yeah, through the course of the match, they've really started to communicate more. Like I said, the, the energy level's gone up as well, so I think they're ready for this. Michelle Croppen going through her pre-shot routine. Calming herself, settling her nerves. Here's the beep, steps up to the line. She's straight into her process. Big deep breath. There's a lot at stake here for the German team and Croppen needs to get them off to a good start. I don't know if you noticed the kind of baby powder on the uh, hand and tab of this archer and onto her neck. That's because, you know, in these conditions, if you're a bit sweaty, your release doesn't kind of slide through your neck. And that powder really makes sure that it's, you know, nice and slippery almost. So you get a good release. See that hand go around the back of the neck. He's working for them. Charlie Schwartz putting it into the 10. Now... Shooting first when you're behind, the job is to score highly to put your opponents under pressure. Yeah. Nine. Two nines and a ten is pretty good in these conditions. A 28, and now you see the Germans talking to each other. Uh, Lisa Unruh communicating to her team for the next three hours. It was a good start from Germany, just what they needed. Well, that 
arrow has been marked as a nine for a measure. I, I felt that was a ten. I'd put down a ten. I think it's in. Well, another high one from uh, Gombaeva. She's had a couple of arrows go off, and uh, I feel almost cruel pointing them out because she's probably been the best archer for the Russian team, and that just makes it more obvious when she shoots outside the uh, the centre of the target. Germany with a chance to put this out of reach. Well, that may well have gone in that first arrow. Charlene Schwartz has been pretty reliable. She's popped it into the nine, and the grouping looking pretty good actually for the second two arrows. So, whatever Unru said, they are shooting the way that the de facto team leader has suggested. So, there is a chance here for the Russians to take this in four, potentially on for 56. They can afford to drop one point, and they have dropped that one point already. They now need two tens to secure the European title. Ksenia Perova up for her last regulation arrow, needs a 10. And that looks like it's gone into the eight. It may well be measured. But already, even if it gets marked up, it's not enough. Now that's in the ten. So it's an interesting one here. A ten to finish for Gombaeva. She has been the best archer. I think that... Look, there is, as you can see, two marked arrows. There are two marked arrows that are going to be measured here. My gut feeling is that the nine is going to get marked up to a ten, but I think the eight may stay the same, in which case we will remain at four set points each. Nikki, are you with me on that one? Yeah, I agree there. Let's, yeah, we can just see that arrow. Look, nice close up there. If that judge feels that magnifying glass, that that arrow has broken that black line in any way, then that arrow will be marked up. That's the critical one. Yeah. The middle one of the three on the left. That's the difference right there between taking the European title or not. Or having to shoot, uh, uh, or having to go into yeah. a shoot off. Yeah. Four apiece as things stand. We are on tender hooks here, waiting for the judge. She's clearly made her decision. We just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> Everyone's staring at it. We haven't got a, an indication. And the judge will show us if we have a shoot off or a winner. We have a winner. They've marked up. They've marked both of the arrows up. The nine's gone up to a ten. The eight has gone up to a nine. So they must have just clipped the line there. It means that Russia scored 55 points in the fourth set, which is all they needed They're to share the points and take the European title. Elena Osipova, Svetlana Gombaeva, and Ksenia Perova are the 2021 European champions. Well, there you go. It came down to a measure there. You've got to say, overall, the Russians were the better team. Uh, but look at uh, Germany there, celebrating the silver medal. They're happy with their performance as well. Yeah, you know, they've come here and they've competed well. There's been some really hard rounds to get to this match. So, you know, they've, they've done an amazing job and that's going to put them in good place ahead of the final World Cup in Paris in two weeks' time and then the Olympic Games in 47 days.